The spirit of the restoration and the dedication of the Kirtland, Ohio Saints from 1831 to 1837 is evident to the modern visitor through restored buildings here on what is known as the Kirtland Flats. Early in the 1820s, Newell K. Whitney came into this area and settled here because he saw a prime piece of real estate due to the fact this is the major intersection in Kirtland, Ohio, or was at that time. Running north and south, you have the main road here, and then running east and west behind me, uh, everyone who was traveling through this area would pass through this intersection. So Newell K. Whitney set up a red store just on the northwest corner of the intersection and did very, very well. Peter French, who was a local resident, owned a lot of this property. And over time, Neil K. Whitney purchased lot after lot and pieces of lots from Peter French. One of the most important would be right behind me where he then tore down what was a log building that Peter French had and put in a white store. Newell K. Whitney was such a meticulous record keeper that his uh, ledgers were able to be used by those who restored the building to its 1830 appearance and were able to stock it based on the information they got from those ledgers. This is the trading room in the Newell K. Whitney store, which is east of the mercantile or main store area. Because money was not readily available, individuals would come bringing uh, products and goods to trade with Newell K. Whitney in uh, exchange for store credit. It also served as a bishop's storehouse. When the saints arrived in Kirtland, uh, the Lord fulfilled his promise that in Ohio he would give the saints his law which part of that definitely is the, known as the law of consecration and stewardship. Each individual was to consecrate all of their goods to the Lord and receive a stewardship by which they could then uh, produce whatever commodities were needed for their family as well as hopefully have surplus that then could be given uh, for the poor and the needy and providing for them. In order to do that, the Lord called for what he referred to as my storehouse, which today we commonly refer as a bishop's storehouse. This bishop's storehouse and subsequent bishop's storehouses were created in Missouri and Illinois, Utah, and finally really around the world. And of course, in bishop's storehouses around the world today, not only are, are commodities uh, given to individuals who have the need, but uh, services are also provided as well. With that, then what we're seeing is the beginning of what is known as the great welfare system of the church began here in some very small quarters, much smaller than any other bishop's storehouse. And once again, we can't help but see the hand of the Lord and His foreknowledge of what would be needed at a later day, but that the saints needed to learn and especially bishops needed to be looked to as those who provide for the poor and the needy it would seem that when we reach out and sacrifice to help others, we love. No sacrifice, no love. The Lord wants us to love. I believe this was probably the first bishop's storehouse or Lord's storehouse in this dispensation as it kind of have a dual use of both that trading room and wholesale room as well as the bishop's storehouse. It took on added significance at a later time as recorded in section 72 of the Doctrine and Covenants. The Lord addressed the high priests of His church. He said, Hearken and listen to the voice of the Lord, O ye who have assembled yourselves together, who are the high priests of my church, to whom the kingdom and power have been given. For verily thus saith the Lord, it is expedient in me for a bishop to be appointed unto you, or of you unto the church in this part of the vineyard. And then he continued, And now I say unto you, My servant, Newell K. Whitney, is the man who shall be appointed and ordained into this power. Now, when this revelation was received, Newell K. Whitney was one of the high priests that was in the room. And his immediate response is, I do not see a bishop in myself. And the prophet Joseph Smith was actually approached by Newell K. Whitney in the first, probably, refusal to serve as a bishop the church had ever had. And Joseph looked at him and he says, I think the Lord sees more in you than you do. And he says, but I don't know what a bishop does. And he, the, the Lord then responded to Newell K. Whitney's request with these words. 
the word of the Lord, in addition to the law which has been given, making known the duty of the bishop who has been ordained into the church in this part of the vineyard, which is verily thus, to keep the Lord's storehouse, to receive the funds of the church in this part of the vineyard, to take an account of the elders as before has been commanded, and to administer to their wants, who shall pay for that which they receive inasmuch as they have wherewith to pay, that this also may be consecrated to the good of the church, to the poor and the needy. And so though we use this as a trading room, we also had seen the mercantile room earlier, everything uh, becomes available to the church members in Kirtland through Neil K. Whitney, and this room is the Bishop's storehouse.